Gently close your eyes. Keep your head neck back erect. Relax your spine. The root of the spine. The apex of the cervical. The back of your head, the crown. Focus slowly on your breath now. Observing the natural breath. Quieten your mind. And contemplate on quietitude alone. Listen to the Dhyana Shloka. Parasharya Vachaha Saroja Mamalam Gita Artha Gandhot Katam Nana Khyanaka Kesaram Harikatha Sambodhana Bodhitam Loke Sajjana Shatpadaira Haraha Pepi Amanam Da Bhuyad Bharata Pankajam Kalimala Pradvam Sinashreya Se Rub your both palms, generate heat, apply it on your eyes, cheeks, front and back of your neck. And with that simple palming, you can open your eyes. The following shlokas uh, will interpret how impermanent this world is, what are all the possible ignorant ideas we have got about ourselves and how to break them. How to move into move towards the ultimate reality, the permanent reality, and break down our ignorance. That's more about what we'll be discussing the entire session. Perhaps the other two, three shlokas will be covering the same. 2.22. Vasam Sijirnani Yatavihaya. Vasam Sijirnani Atavihaya Navani Grihnati Naroparani Navani Grihnati Naroparani Tatha Shari Rani Vihaya Jirnan Tatha Shari Rani Vihaya Jirnan Anyani Sayati Navani Dehi Anyani Sayati Navani Dehi It is our usual practice if we open our closet, we will get around hundreds, hundreds of pairs of dresses. If not hundreds, at least 50, 60s. For certain people, it just comes over a face. (laughs) 
Lord Krishna gives a beautiful analogy here. That just as we throw out worn out dresses, which we don't, <laughs> uh, we throw out this old fragile body of ours and just as we purchase and wear new dresses, new clothes, we take up another body. Now, this, this shloka is very, very easy you know, to understand. But we have to get to the depth of it. In this shloka, he is pointing out different concepts. One, he is saying that the death is just an episode of life. Death is not the end. Why? Because the life process is yet not accomplished. We are taking up another life, another different form. Yeah. So death is an intermediary interval where this transmigration of what we call as life principle happens. You call it as life principle. I call it as Jeevatman, Jeeva. Now, what happens when we transmigrate? <laughs> you know, that's that's another uh, interesting question what uh, Zusha asked the other day. Zusha, the answers are here. Mm -hmm. It is being, although an inscrutable phenomenon, an extremely complex, complex phenomenon, this death and rebirth is, it is being discussed at length in a scripture called Brahma Sutras. If you are a yoga student, you might be knowing about it. It is one among the three prasthana, the interpretation of which is done by Adi Shankaracharya. It comes in his life story, uh, which is written Shankara, which is written as Shankara Vijaya, that there, there happened in an episode where Vyasa Maharishi, you know, flesh and blood came and conversed with Adi Shankaracharya on the above said matter. So this subject matter is discussed at length. Why? Is it to scare us? <laughs> no. For us to better understand who we are. The first thing that we have to understand is the deha, the sharira, the body. As Ishopanisha says, basmantagum shariram, ashes, illumination of ashes is our body. <laughs> you either bury it, you burn it, it is nothing but ashes and dust. Now there is another concept called Dehi. Who is Dehi? The inner being who holds, who possesses this body. Okay. And that is what we have understood all in all these verses as this immutable self, the eternal truth, the unchanging one, the Dehi. Now there is a third concept which we call as Linga Sharira, that which connects, supposedly connects, <laughs> but doesn't so, uh, the Dehi and the Deha, the Atman and the body, which is the ego, right? Ego is not a state of pride, okay? You're not proud about yourself, you're not proud about your, you're not showy, you're not, you know, we have different, different comprehension of this of this term called ego. She is egoistic. He is egoistic. You know? He is selfish. You know? He is egoistic. Being selfish or being proud is not, is not ego at all. Okay. First, we will understand what ego is. Ego is exactly the feeling of I-ness and mindness. Ahamkaraha, mamakaraha. 
this is I, this body is me. This female form, Lalita, is me. So and so teacher is me. You know? All these analysis about me, myself, is ego. Now we are also attributing ourselves to the to the things that we possess. It can be qualities. I am short tempered, you know. <laughs> I want hot food at my plate. I can't. I can't relish my food if it isn't hot. So all such things about mindness, my guna, my quality, also comes under ego. Now, what happens in this physical death? As you all know now, death is an intermediary interval, right? It's just an episode of one life to another. Like I sit in this room, I leave the room, I move to the other room. It is just that. Yeah. So in that intermediary phase, the body, the Atman, is not reincarnated. You don't get the same body. The Atman cannot be reincarnated because it has no death or birth. Ajam, Nityam, Avyayam. This is what we have learned from all these verses. It is immutable. It is birthless. It has no end. Hmm? So these two entities are never going to come back. They are there. But the one thing that transpires from one place to the other is the ego. Now, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam says, like the grass leech, you know what the grass leech does? It has its limbs firmly stuck on that blade, grass blade. And if he has to leave the grass blade, it takes the takes a few few legs of it, few limbs of it, sticks it with the other limb, <laughs> you know, with the other grass, and then starts to transfer, you know, then starts to commute. Yata. Tranaja, tranaja luka evam. Tranaja luka evam, says Srimad Bhagavatam. Just like that grass leech from one blade to another tries to shift place, but definitely transfers a bit of its own before leaving the grass blade. What do we do? We try to fix something in the another body already <laughs> we choose our parents that we will see in the coming shlokas we choose our house <laughs> we choose which form which being we have to get we have to acquire even before that how is this possible what do i do to change how do I become the richest, uh, you know, the, the, <laughs> the daughter of the richest man in the universe? <laughs> what should I put in the put in the ego, the ingredients that I should, which will make me uh, get birth in the next life as the richest one, the most successful one? Alas, the most richest, most successful one, the most pitiable ones. They end up having, you know, they end up having suicidal anyways yes the ingredients that you the seeds that you put inside your ego is what it takes to transfer in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam in Katopanishad is this statement yatha karma tata shrutam just as your actions are just how your knowledge is, the wisdom is, you will take the next birth. <laughs> what is knowledge here? Knowing about uh, why Mars is not sufficient with water. Hmm? Or why is there no oxygen in, in the Chandrama, in the moon?
is this one opportunity that I keep saying, this one opportunity of being human. In this lifetime opportunity, you get to realize, not know, dear. We all know. We all know now. But realize that that birthless entity is me. That deathless entity is me. And getting associated with that bodiless being. And then from that state, your action springs out. Your thoughts spring out. Perhaps your dreams too. Hmm? There is wisdom. There is knowledge. If such is your action, then you get a better in elated beings form. Or perhaps one another in the multiverse, a follower of Ravana Maharishi sitting beside him. Hmm? <laughs> But we do not know the exact pathway. How do I cling to that immutable being, the bodiless being, letting off, getting away from all these bodily mental troubles? My body, you say that I have to get out of this body. How do I do that when my legs are paining, man? My, my legs are aching like anything. How do I do, a, do that when I have an excruciating sciatica pain? How do I do that when, I, when, I being, when I'm being wounded by my boss? How do I do that when I, when I am constantly tortured with all those, you know, objectionable words given by my life partner? Whatever in whichever place we fit in. How do we do it? The first and foremost thing that we do is when you hear something, yeah, Swami Supradeeptananda, uh, uh, Swami Sukhbodhananda asks a question to his disciple. Mm -hmm. He asks, what happens to your mind when your boss calls you monkey? He calls you a monkey. What happens to your mind? It gets super agitated. How can he call me monkey? Oh, how, what is the guts that he has got? What kind of arrogance this is? I get super agitated. How is that he can call? And then Swamiji, in a very funny manner, explains, this is how you acknowledge that you are a monkey. <laughs> that you are a monkey. So when you know you are not a monkey, why are you agitated? As simple as that. When we know that we are not a monkey, you shouldn't be agitated. When we know the objectionable words does not accrue to me, we shouldn't be agitated. The listener is not me. Ask yourself, that is the biggest antidote Bhagavan Ramana has given to us. Biggest antidote. Question yourself, who is experiencing pain? Who is experiencing that insult? Who is troubled? Ask yourself. Am I really listening? You eventually know you don't look like monkey. You don't have a tail. You eventually know that you are not this body name and form. And then... When you're totally into that state, or even partially, words are mere sound phonic waves in the air. 
they are not insults anymore they are not trouble they are not they are not wounds in your heart anymore when swami vivekananda swami ji left his ethereal body that was 4th july 1902 in velur mat kolkata he his very old friend who is also a brother monk lived in chennai where i am in right now quite miles away he came in swami ramakshananda dream that's very same time few minutes past 9 9 pm he came in his dream shashi shashi is his pet name so shashi shashi you know what i spat my body out he said i spat my body out swami ramakrishnananda is again a monk he woke up like this and it was it a dream never a mahatma gets a dream it is always a divine vision the next day through telegram he gets the information that swami ji is not there swami ji's form ethereal form is not there so this is how real masters have lived i remember another incident of swami ji swami ji was super duper famous in west in us there was this woman who was deeply deeply enthusiastic with his lectures and all you know swami ji is like that he is always positive and and shares this positivity all around the so super duper enthusiastic she comes to swami ji and then uh, you know she, <laughs> she is a woman of a most developed country so she speaks this way swami ji i want a child like you <laughs> mentioning that she wants to marry him no huh? and swami ji with folded hands says mother here i am you see the amount of separated identity if swami ji was also young completely a young adult <laughs> he could have easily taken you know carried away by the by the traditions by the growth and development the materialistic wealth of the west it was under his feet but look how he has been the amount of dissociative identity from the body and mind bhagwan ramana had sarcoma in his arms the disciples were very worried they were trying too many things surgical incisions on his arm and, and things like that people did spread a rumor that bhagwan didn't have any any trouble at all he was completely pain free zero pain free all crap bhagwan said that the pain was such extreme that thousands of scorpions sting if if they could sting at one point of time that's the amount of pain the sarcoma could create so the disciples besieged him so bhagwan you should do something you are a master you should do something for this you have to come out of this you have to be for, for us you have to preach well, you know what uh, Ram- very honest very honest flat flat on their faces look to do all these things first i have to consider that there, there is a body i have to consider in this body there is a left arm 
I have to consider that that I have to concentrate on this left arm. So consider the mind. And then I have to concentrate with that mind, my left arm. This is all not possible. I have no body. I have no mind. That's how he lived. It's not easy. Not at all easy. It sounds so wonderful, soothing, calming when we listen to. But yes, perhaps if we listen to such things a thousand times, ten thousand times, slowly we adhere to the principles. It can also happen. If you do not know what to do, Krishna in the following verses he will say, if you do not know how to do, just follow me. Copy paste is very, very, very easy in this, in this postmodern world. Copy paste. Copy paste. He says, copy me. How do I live? I am with thousand and eight wives. Having one wife itself <laughs> in a life is a great headache. Ask a man. Is one representative. <laughs> you know, catering to the needs, the requirements. And then keeping all thousand and eight wives, queens happy. It's not easy. Forget. Forget that. Krishna, when he was at the age of 12, he was forced from one place to another from his so-called parents to the real parents. And then he comes to know, okay, they are not my parents. And then he is forced to do all those karma, all those duties, which is his vadharma, being a kshatriya, being a warrior, to protect his kingdom. So he leaves the place and never comes back. That's a kind... Does that mean he is very, you know, rude to his uh, uh, second parents? No, no. He wasn't rude. He took care of the parents. He took care of the entire grama, the entire village with all his um, ministers. Ayakarmani uh, with, with the other With the other administrating people, administrators. But... He didn't come back. If he comes back, there would be attachment again. This is not the time of play. This is not the time of child's games. It is the time to rule. It is the time not to rule even. You know, he never was crowned. He crowned his brother. He crowned his, his grandfather. He didn't even rule. It's time to protect the society. That was the level of karma yoga he was. That was the level of dissociative identity from the body name, form and mind he had had in his life. So he says, copy me. Do your duty. Do your dharma. Do your righteous duties. But while doing it, never get caught up Never get succumbed to the to the ego which says, I am that. Never get caught up. Oh my God, this was mine. I paid the money. There was no acknowledgement given to it. Beware, behold. No, I was a bit digressed. Let me come back to this deha, dehi and ego concept. So when the death, physical death happens, the dehi, the immutable being, remains. Why it remains? Because it is all pervading. We think there is something inside our body. No, 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 no. The body is inside that. <laughs> when I when I start taking uh, Vedantic lessons, 
is another question that a, that a student asked. The immutable being, immutable being inside you, which means the sharira, the, the body is holding the immutable being. I said, sorry, my dear. The immutable being is all pervading like the space. And hence, I, I, I started emphasizing on the space example. Like the space, it is all pervading completely universal no language nothing can kill nothing can destroy what is the age what is the carbon dating of akasha you can carbon date earth's earth's mud but not the space <laughs> so that immutable being is all pervading is universal is timeless but the way to realize that self is going inward. So don't, don't uh, mistake it to be incontained in the body. So Dehi is the possessor of the Deha, the immutable being inside and all around is holding the, this cloth. Now, what happens with this cloth? The cloth is torn. It is fragile. It is weak. Now, I have to discard it. Is it supposed to be 80-year-old or 90-year-old and then you discard? No. People can die at 16 also. So, which means it does not talk about the skin or the body. You understand the point? Please carefully listen. <laughs> It does not mean that only when the body becomes fragile, weak, torn, and you know, completely inactive, you die. There's another calculation. When your karma extinguishes, the, the amount of karma from this body cannot radiate anymore. I'll repeat again. The amount of karma that this body cannot perform anymore, if that state occurs, there is physical death. Okay. So we are coming back to the karma calculation. My God. <laughs> now every five-year-old US citizen knows what is karma. Huh? When his pencil got breaks, is, is got broken, he said, my bad, my karma. <laughs> no, it's not karma. Karma is the repercussion of actions that you have been accumulating all of the previous births. So, if you have been breathing, talking, watching, tasting, there is repercussion, ripple effect of that action. Yes. If you pelt a stone on the, on the pool, there are ripples created, right? So the ripple effect of watching, talking, which means all bad watching, all bad mouthing leads to bad karma. Good karma leads to good, good mouthing, good, good phrases leads to good karma. Uh, on a superficial manner, yes. Which means, you, means to, you mean to say all these actions will create a big... You imagine this entire room full of your karma. Previous births. You've been stacking with all these atoms like karma ripples inside. Which means you have incessant number of lives. Incessant number of births. My God, this is already fixed. What should I do now? Why am I reading Vedanta? Why am I reading Gita? If I have to take a life of an alligator, if I have to take a life of a mosquito, why should I? Why should I even read?
there is a third way. Karma, Shukla, Ashukla, Akrishna, Ashukla, he says, Pat Rishi Patanjali says. So, karma can be white, black, grey, neither black nor white. So, what is being neither black nor white, which means slowly the atoms and molecules set in this karmic room of that we have accumulated, that I have accumulated, this can destroy. My backpack can be less burdensome. Can it be less heavy? Yes. There is a way. How do I do it? How do I reduce the burden of my karmic backup? Only by starting to watch, speak, breathe with one sense of pure attitude, I am not doing. I am not the doer. I am not enjoying. I am literally enjoying. Look, I am living in a humid city. I am perspiring. <laughs> I am perspiring. This is happening to your The humid city is making me frustrated. I have to get out of this city. This is so warm. This is so not taken. This is happening to your mind. Who is experiencing this is exactly what you have to do. While you emote, while you speak, while you watch, while you walk, while you talk, everywhere. I am not that wise. I can't do that. <laughs> okay. If you're not that wise, if you cannot do it. Huh? I remember one story of Buddha. Uh, today, so many stories put together. <laughs> So there, there comes a person, there comes a very normal layman. Okay? He does not want to do anything about his own spiritual progress, but still wants to come and stand before Buddha and ask, what, what is that I can do? He says, okay, you close your eyes and observe who you are. What is happening to your body? He says, I can't do this. <laughs> Simply on his face, okay. Okay, then he gives some japa, the mantra and all, you know. You do this, perhaps you get concentration and then slowly you can. Through concentration, you can contemplate and then move towards pure state of meditation, which happens on its own. He says, no, 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 no I can't do this. <laughs> and then, see, but that, he is a real master. One who is compassionate enough to get down to this, stoop down to this level of the disciple and treat him. This is what he had done. He's, he put two people in front of that monastery and start, and asked them to broom. Okay. So when when the broom is this, there's this noise that happens. One, two, three. No? He said, now sit down and with that sound of that broom, you match your mind and start doing the japa. And this is, this seems to be easy. By this way, unless until the broom sound is stopped, I'll not be, I'll not be distracted. So, <laughs> I'll stoop down again. Not me. Krishna has stopped stooped himself down to beings like us. And if we are not able to work on who am I, who is experiencing, who is the knower, you just believe that you are not doing. Can you believe in agency ship? I am an agent. What do I do? I'm a doctor. Okay. Treat human beings like an agent. I'm a lawyer. Okay. 
work for justice like an agent. I am a teacher. Teach, nourish people like an agent. So if you are an agent, you will definitely know you will not. You are not entitled to income. <laughs> you will get a small amount of commission. What is called as commission, small percentage. Yes. So you will start not to question why is that that I am not acknowledged. So, agency ship will kill the doership and enjoyership. This is the least one can do. Or firmly believe in that divine wave which is keeping us alive. One mishap in that constellation or even one mishap in that asteroid belt. I used to give this example to kids. One mishap in that asteroid belt and one small rock of that comes and hits. What happens to us? What happens to your plan? What about your vacation plan? You were, you, <laughs> you paid your tickets to Bali. <laughs> So you firmly believe that everything is going good. Everything will be good. And that goodness, that righteousness is divine. Put all the things into him. Oh my God, I have to finish. I have to pay my bills. Oh my God. My my loans are not yet settled. Oh my God, my kids are not settled. They are they are very very difficult to me. Put everything unto him, unto that divine energy. If you don't believe, at least you believe in divine energy. Put that into into that divine energy. Surrender. Work like an agent, or surrender. If you could do that, I'm coming back to the subject matter. If you can do that, the frail entity called ego, the in-between layer between Dehi and Deha, will have powerful ingredients so that the seeds of the suffering which is already into the, into the another body which we have already clung upon like a grass leech, will be less, mind you. The another body will also have a the set of seeds of suffering. It will definitely have. But with your way of living, with your way of thinking, with your way of acting, you can reduce the seeds of suffering. Again, to the point I had unfinished a bit, this body need not be fragile or weak to have encountered death. No. Only when the karmic exhaustion happens, you leave this body. It does not mean that you have reduced the karmic atoms that is filled in the in this in this big room. It it means that now the the remaining karmic atoms cannot be passed on to or cannot be radiated through this body. If you are jealous, if you are greedy. Perhaps you will become an alligator or a lion or a jackal, you know, to wither off those karmic atoms. You understand my point? So, it is not stabbed that only at 80, only at 60, you leave this body. It's not fixed. Okay. 
Now you know what you have to do in the intermediary phase, what better you can make this intermediary phase by living in this particular entity. One, I'll, I'll reframe those sentences for you to quickly, you know, keep that into your mind. One, to get a better body, <laughs> better grass blade with less seeds of suffering, to get the transition of one body to another, to get that transmigration period easy. It is not easy, mind you. It is not at all easy. To make that transition easy, one, start acting like an angel. Worry not, fear not. These are the words of Swami Vivekananda again. Uh, we're collecting his words. Worry not, grieve not, fear not. If you're going to worry, if you're going to be fearful, it means you have already taken charge of your life. <laughs> you're worrying because, oh my God, I have to do it. You're, you're fearful because you think that there is someone else who is going to help. Nobody is going to help you. You are going to help you yourself. It is a trap that we have made up for our own self. It is a super duper trap. How can you? Okay. Again, another story. How can you help yourself sinking in an ocean that you have been dreaming? And then you're shrieking, you know, you're shrieking, you're lamenting. Oh my God, I'm sinking. Oh my God, I'm sinking. Shruti Mata, Upanishad says, Uttishtata, Jagrata, Propyavarani Bodhata, arise, awake. You just have to be out of this dreamy world. No one else can help you. Can you swim across that dreamy ocean and then <laughs> not sink? Is that even possible? You just have to wake yourself up. Think in, other, think in another manner. Like yeah, a woman is by, a, by, by your side is shrieking in a nightmare. What will you do? Will you go inside her dream and then say, well, this is dream. <laughs> Stupid, right? I just have to slap her. Get up, you idiot. <laughs> you know. We are idiots like that. We are trying to make our own identity as this body name and form and trapping, trapping ourselves inside. What is that we have to do? Shruti Mata Vedas is like Mata, is like mother, very, very compassionate she is. A child, wake up, child, wake up, wake up. How do you wake up this five-year-old child to get up and go to school? Huh? With 30 round minutes, you have to be <laughs> <laughs> waking that kid up, right? Wake up, child. Wake up, wake up, child. Wake up. That is what Shruti is doing. That is what Vedas are doing. Wake up, child. You are not this. Bodies are just torn pieces of cloth. When they are done, you worn them out. They are worn out, cast them out, and then you try to take another knee. You decide, you choose that. I want a pink one. I want a blue one. Vasam siji rani yathaviharya navani grihnati naroparani tataviharya Tatashari Rani Vihaya Jirnani Anyani Sanyati Navani Dehi. You take up a new deha, new dress. I'm going to stop. This is going to continue. No? A bit of death business is going to continue for the next shloka also. And then you will understand a bit more. Again, with lots of analogies, I'll try to mellow it down. I'll try to make it simple. Thank you so much.